this adventure, it's Pearl Essence without the price. A lot of companies are doing color shift paints, metallics that as you move around the model, they shift from one color to another, which is really cool and it's something I've wanted to try for a long time. But I don't have any. And so when somebody suggested that for this week's video, I do something with Pearl Essence, it was either I say no or come up with something creative. The models I'll be doing this effect on are the Automata for the Duchies of Vinci, an army for the Age of Fantasy from One Page Rules. You can find a link to their Patreon in the description. The idea behind my technique will be to divide the model into four quarters and give each quadrant a different color base coat, then give it a thin layer of metallics so that all these colors show through. In a weird plot twist, I'm going to show a final product first. Sometimes, if I'm not sure something is going to work, I'll try it before shooting anything, and I did this guy with my airbrush. I was surprised how well it actually worked to get that pseudo pearlescence effect. So I'm going to start with a tutorial on how I did this, but I know not everyone has an airbrush. So after that, I'm going to challenge myself and see if I can pull off the exact same thing, but with brush only instead. To get started, I'm going to break up my paint on the palette into the directions I'm going to be spraying them from. I've chosen magenta and green to be my pearl colors, but really, any bright saturated color will work. For my shadows, I'm going to use a brown since my metallic will be a bronze color, and my light color a bone. The process then becomes very simple. Load your airbrush however works best for you, then hold the model facing you at the angle you want this light to catch from. I painted little guide marks on the base to help keep me honest. Then just go to work. I thin my paints a lot, so this is going to take me a few layers, but the idea is you want an even base, but only from the angle you marked. It's alright to twist up and down as needed, but I found best practice was to never rotate the holder in your hand ever. Just keep it still and get those layers on until you've got a solid base. Moving on to the next bright color, turn the model 180 and start applying that color to the opposite side from the other. This will be up to you which side you like highlights and shadows to come from. I'm using my normal front right shoulder highlight because that's what I like for gaming models. But it should be possible to do with a direct front light if you want, both saturated colors visible from the front. This color though is basically a repeat of the first, so there's not much to say about it. For this it's going to be shade before highlight, and unfortunately will require a couple extra steps at the end. But this first part is exactly the same. Just spray it from the back at an angle between the other two. Don't worry if you go over the other colors. They should all overlap at some point to create a solid undercoat. But if you want to see more of the colors in the shadows, keep your angle thin. Once that's all done, it's time to put on the personal judgment pants. Because now we want to go around the model and fill in any shadows our last layer isn't going to hit. Because the light layer only wants to be sprayed from above, I have to get some of these under angles. Under the arms and legs, in some joints, and the underside of the bolt thrower. Don't worry too much if you miss anything, and don't go too heavy handed with this, as there will be a step afterwards that will fix any of those mistakes. Time for the lighter color, in this case bone, but if you really wanted to make him a colorful pearl, a lighter version of any color would work. For this one, it's pretty much the first two, but restricting yourself to spraying at a downward angle as well as from the fixed position. This way, light only catches the upper areas of the model, leaving those shadows we just did below. Not too much else to say though for this one. Now it's time for the metallic. This is not a drill, this is not a drill. We want this thinned right down. The whole premise of this hinges on the fact that the metallic layer will give the model its sheen, but not cover up the colors underneath. So barely a dab of the chosen metallic into the thinner and water. Spray some on the base first, and if it looks like the stonework is ready to go out for a night of clumming, aka glittery, then we've got the right dilution. If it covers quickly, add more thinner. Then from there, it's an all over kind of thing. You want to make the bot sparkle. And I do that with three or four layers. Basically, just building up that metallic until I'm happy with the overall coating. And I can see the layers underneath, but it still looks uniform. Spray lightly. But with how dilute it is, a bit of spidering won't be a problem. Take your time. 
There's so much temptation to just spray it on heavy, but like the broiler in your oven, it can go quickly from delicious to burnt, or in this case, just become a base layer of metallics. He looks nice and sparkly now, but too uniform. So this step is going to be about adding those dimensions back in. I did this in the first model I showed by blacklining it, but just using the same brown I did for the shadows. So I started to do that on this one too, just to show it off. But that does take a lot of patience to do, and since this is a fast method, we can speed it up with a wash. Just some Argrax Earthshade in my case. It won't get every line filled, but it will get you close. For the speedy perfectionists out there, a combination of both will work well too. Once the wash is dry, just go back in and darken what you need to with some lining. With the darks done, how about some light? I want to add a bit of hand-painted reflection to the model, just a few lines where the light would reflect brighter. Normally this can be done with a brighter bronze or gold, or even just some silver mixed in, but in the spirit of experimentation, I'm actually going with a teal blue metallic, adding a bit more of a color pop. Just following lines along the cylinders of the model, keeping the highlights thin but adding texture, and on the back, only doing a bit of edge highlighting, so it doesn't appear too flat either. The last thing are the finishing touches. I won't go into detail about each of these, but basically the wood on the crossbow needed done, as well as the feathers on the bolt along with the string ready to fire. His sword and back wind up key I did with a metallic silver as well, but just doing them normally without the color effect, and then added some more color by doing the chest gem blue. So here we have the final automatons for this method. I did go a little heavy with the metallic on these ones versus the original, but you can still see that color shifting as the model spins around. Is it a true pearlescence? No, of course not. But I do think it's still a really cool effect that will stand out on the tabletop as the unit changes hue while they're moved around. So that's how I would do it normally. The airbrush making it go on nice and thin and even so that we can see the colors of that undercoat shining through. So the question becomes, if it's so easy with an airbrush, is it even possible with a brush? Well, that's my challenge starting right now. Before I even start with the colors, I'm going to reverse the order a bit, starting with a wash of Argrax over the light gray primer. I want to be able to see what I'm doing, since this is all going to hinge on getting the angles right. And since I don't want to be too painstakingly detailed with these underlayers, this wash will also fill in some gaps that I'm inevitably going to miss. Plus, sometimes it's just fun to watch a wash work, and you can really see how they work over the light gray. Once it's fully dry, I get the magenta out again, but this time using a large brush to apply it. I'm going to apply the magenta pretty much exactly like I would a base coat to any color, but my hand has this model locked into position. The important part for me is not turning the angle of view. As soon as I start rotating the model, I'll go further than I need to. So I hold it still and turn the brush instead if I can't reach something. This is just a color base coat, so it doesn't need to look pretty. It just needs to get all the right spots. Angle it up and down a little, that's fine. Just try not to rotate. And since this is a base coat, like all base coats, I'll have to go over it a second time. Though since the first time gives us the outline, it won't be too tough. Just reinforcing the color that's there now. It's Green's turn. And I think I did a pretty good job with the magenta because when I turn it 180, I can't even see any of the pink. From here on, it's just repeating the last step, but for our green. At some points, it does feel like I'm filling in too much, but that's actually all right, since when it comes to the brown shadow layers, I'd have to go over top the green and magenta anyways. So it's just about filling in everything I see from this angle. So it's shadows time. Using the same colors for the one I airbrushed, black and orange, to make the brown, I get started. Now from this angle, I can see both the magenta and green, though there's still a few strips of the primer that I wasn't able to get, which means I got pretty close to sticking within that 45 degree viewing angle when doing the first two colors. But now it's about what I see at this angle, which means a lot of this green and magenta are getting covered up. I can't just paint between the lines, but those lines do serve as a nice guide. I'm leaving the winder key only because I know I'm going to be painting that metal later. Might as well save me the work. 
And just like the airbrush, because this is my shadow color, I have to go around the model and pick out the shadowy areas on the front as well, under the arms and around joints that are just hard to see from any direction except underneath. So that means moving the model and using my judgment as to where those should be. Speaking of using my judgment, this last bone layer is going to be a big test of that. Because these are highlights technically, I really only want to get everything from this 90 degrees as though it's coming from above. I have the same uncovered primer guides that I did with a brown, but the bone's a bit more see-through. So as I go over the green and magenta, they do show through still. But that's kind of a good thing in this case. Kind of like an incidental blending, which will help with the metallic coat. But it does mean I have to go over a few of the areas more than a couple of times, as I really do want them to be the lightest bone they can be. But again, this is just the underlayer, before metallics and a wash, and it's just for gaming, not competition, so I don't need to be that neat about it in the end. I think for this one I'll end up with more pink than the sprayed versions, but doing it with the brush has allowed me to get some places better with the other colors than the airbrush did. The small shield crest on his chest, for example, got a much nicer split of pink and bone than the sprayed counterparts. So I do think in hindsight, I might have wanted to brush some of those details in when spraying too. So the airbrush made the metallics go on really easy, but the challenge here will be to see if it's even possible with a brush. The big difference is that to make the paint stay thick, but pigment dilute, I have to use a medium. Just your standard acrylic medium, but something thick, not like Lamia, though I'm sure it would probably work too. The big question is why do I need the medium? Wouldn't water on thinner work to dilute the pigment? The thing is, I need this to go on as evenly as possible. When a paint, even metallics, become too thin, they behave more like a wash, which means with the amount of layers I'm going to have to do, all the recesses would end up with a more saturated amount of the metallic flakes. With the thicker medium, it should go over in a more smooth flat area, so the multiple coats build up evenly overall. Though I think with this first coat I picked the wrong brush. Definitely keep the good brushes away from this step. Metallics, heavy handedness, and overall coverage are not nice playmates to the expensive paint pushers. With that in mind for the second layer, I'm going with a larger and cheaper brush. Just a mid-grade flathead you get with those art brush packs from Michaels for like 5 bucks. I did leave it to dry fully between this layer and the first layer. During this process, I want to avoid ripping as much as possible. The other nice little bonus about this is because I'm using so much medium to get the effect, it's probably adding a lot of protection to the model too. It took me about 5 coats total to get to the right concentration I was happy with. All the little details after that were exactly the same as the first ones. Black lining and washing, highlighting, and all the small stuff. I'm actually really surprised how close this one turned out to the others. Overall, it's a little darker as the metallic pigment being set in the medium reduced the luster a bit, but it still has the effect I was after. It was a bit more work, but still not that difficult to do. It just took a bit more time. So for the final lineup of the unit, we have the original done off camera to get a sense if this would work, the on camera with some black lining and shading, this one was done at the same time, but used as a test to make sure washes worked for that step. This one also done at the same time as the on-camera one, but black lined instead. And finally, the fully hand-painted one. While I do still want to try some of those pearlescent paints, this is a really good method for a really cool effect, and you're not spending more on paint. I think this would look really good scaled down as well using the brush method in a localized area like a shoulder pad or some armor plates. There's no rule saying it has to be over the whole model. If you enjoyed this painting adventure, please subscribe to join me on others. And if you do try this method out, let me know how it went in the comments, or if you can ping me on the One Page Rules Discord. And I'll see you on the next journey.